We'll go through the installation of the Starlink integration kit, option A. Option A is the option that has the weatherproof connectors for on the outside of your carry bit. Um, so Starlink integration kit consists of, of course, the power unit, the integration kit itself, the required cabling that you need. You've got the choice between a six meter cable or a one meter cable, depending on where you want to install the external connection uh, point compared to where you're going to install the power unit. You'll then have the external connection point itself from the outside of your caravan. It's a weatherproof connector with a weatherproof cap. You'll have a weatherproof connector that we're going to install on the end of your Starlink cables. Um, a couple of connectors and the tools that you're going to need is a pair of scissors or snips. Um, a Stanley knife is an option as well. You're going to need a RJ45 cable crimper, screwdriver, a 24mm hole saw to get a hole in your caravan for the external connection point and a soldering iron. And of course you're going to need your Starlink cable that we're going to have to cut. This is the bit that people don't like. When I cut the cable um, I'd leave at least 30 centimeters up to about half a meter because what we're going to do with this end of the Starlink cable that's normally connected to the Starlink modem is we're going to also put a connection on the end of that one so that if you wanted to use the modem for any reason later on you could still do that with the little connector here. So our first step, cut the cable. So we have our cable that's cut. First job that we need to do, or first step, is to actually put part of the plug over it before we can crimp on a terminal. Now this plug pulls apart, so you unscrew the cap and inside here there is a, um, a little holder for the RJ45. All we have to do at this stage, feed over the locking ring first, then feed the cable through the silicon grommet there, and then we are ready, put that out of the way, then we are ready to start stripping the cable and putting our RJ45 plug on. We need to remove the sheath first to get to the internal cables. Um, cut away 20 to 25 millimeters of the sheath um, using either a pair of scissors, a uh, dedicated sheath cutter, or what I'm doing here, just a uh, Stanley knife. As you remove it, sometimes you'll see there's an aluminium foil still sticking there. That's now currently I've cut that away too. But there's an aluminium foil, it's a blue foil that sits inside. So if you've cut the sheath away and you can still see that blue foil, you need to cut that away as well. Next is a clear foil that needs to be removed. And that then exposes all of the twisted pairs as well as a sheathing core or a earthing core. Make sure that you don't accidentally cut that. If you did cut it, um, I suggest you snip the cable again and start all over. Um, you've just lost a few centimeters of cable. Next step is to untwist all of the pairs because we need to arrange them in the right order so that we can then crimp them onto our RJ45 plug. So after we've untwisted all of the pairs, we have to arrange them in the correct order. The correct order is white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, then green, white brown, brown. It's called the T568B pin layout. There's also an A pin layout, that's not the one that we want to be using. Now, it's crucial to get these pin layout correct because if you get it incorrect you're sending power to the dish on incorrect wires and that could cause permanent damage to your dishy. This is the finicky bit that 
after you've arranged the wires and this is also why we cut additional sheath more than what we actually need because you then want to try and get them in the correct layout but get them all flat so that we can then feed our plug over the cables. I'll just put the ground wire out of the way for a minute. After we've arranged the wires and we're happy with how they're sitting and again the layout is white orange, orange or white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. So we're happy with that. What we're now going to do is we're going to cut it shorter. We need approximately 13 millimeters because the cable connection will sit on the cable like this where the gold at the end will just slide over the end of the cable there. So you want to make sure that you cut them and have enough length to feed them into the connector but not long enough or too long that they're all sticking out. So we get the connector and then we feed our cables gently through. It is clear so as you're putting it through you can check again that you've got the right layout and if you're happy with it feed it all the way and make sure that the sheath goes into the cable as well and that grounding cable is sticking out. Once we're happy with that and I could have even cut them a little bit shorter if I wanted to but once we're happy with that we get our cable crimper RJ45 goes into the crimper crimp it once and we now have an ethernet plug crimped onto our Starlink cable the last step that we need to do is this grounding wire needs to be connected to the gold plated sheath or shielding on the outside of the plug. To do that we'll use a bit of solder. You can simply fold it over and solder it. Um, make sure that you don't use too much solder. We also don't want to get it too hot, damage the cable, um, but we want to make sure that it actually fits in the plug. Right, once our soldering iron is warm, we're going to solder on the uh, little earthing wire. Now, I use the cable crimper as a little stand. It just makes it easier to try and solder to. Um, we've got the soldering iron. And we want to solder that steel cable to the outside of that RJ45 plug. Now, I prefer to solder on the back of the plug because the plug itself still needs to go into that little holder that we've got made. So that's the soldering done. Once it's cooled off, take it out of our little crimper and then we can cut away the excess wire. So we've trimmed the excess of the grounding wire and now it's time to finish off the plug. So we'll slide these bits on and we're going to connect this side of the plug. Inside of this plug you'll see that there is a slot that lines up with our RJ45 plug. We'll make sure that we put this in the right way and then once you put it in, keep pushing it until you hear it click. Now that's secured, we then go and slide in our first section. As you can see here, it has a groove. The groove lines up with a pin on the inside and then it slides in place. And after that, we connect the end cap and screw that on tight. And now we have our weatherproof connection. We can now do the same if we wanted to with the other end of the cable that we've cut off. So this is the end that goes into your 
Starlink modem. Um, we can put another RJ45 plug onto here. And the reason why you might want to do that is if for some reason in the future you want to have the ability to still connect your Starlink router to your Starlink dish. And that is also the reason why we provide this little adapter. So should you choose to do this and you've got this cable crimped on here and of course on the other end that goes to your dish here you now have this plug. You can use this little adapter that slides in and connects and then you can connect this cable so that you make up a cable again that goes to your starting dish. So we'll now go and install our weatherproof external connector on the outside of the caravan. I've got a 24mm hole saw to cut the hole to mount it and I've mapped out the cable route. My van connect lives up in a cupboard in here and I've got a clear cable path to connect the weatherproof connector to the van connect. So I'll start by drilling the hole in here. And there you go, that's the hardest bit done. So after we've drilled the hole, just clean up whatever's left around it from stickers or anything like that. And then we're going to drill the pilot holes for the mounting screws. So we'll line up, make sure that it's level with the rest of the caravan, and we'll drill a small pilot hole for the screws. And those will be to mount this in place. Next step is we'll run the cable. So we've got our ethernet cable, and we're now just gonna run that through. You can either do what I'm doing now and run it through from the outside if you know where it's gonna go and it's got a clear path, or you could run like a, um, a steel wire down, tape it onto the wire so you can then pull that through. So now that we've got the cable run through, we've connected it to the back of the weatherproof plug and we're ready to mat that permanently to the caravan. One thing that I didn't mention before yet is when you pick your mounting position, you need to make sure that you've got enough room at the back of the weatherproof plug to connect the cable to. You need at least 50 millimeters of space um, between the outside wall and whatever you've got as an internal wall. When we go to Manchester, there's a weatherproof rubber seal. Um, you can use that as I'm doing here. You could also choose to actually remove that and then apply non-hardening silicon around it to glue it permanently in place. I'll just be screwing it in place using the seal and I'll apply some silicon around it to still make sure that it's fully weatherproof. And we also need to make sure when you're screwing it on that you now screw on the cap. And the cap goes between the weatherproof plug and the caravan. And there you have it. Weatherproof plug installed. Like I said, only thing outstanding. Clean the area nicely, apply some sealant to it um, so that you ensure that you remain um, that weatherproof integrity. And we're ready to connect it on the inside. So when you finished installing your weatherproof connector on the outside of your caravan, it's time to connect everything up on the inside. Um, I've just gone to the catfish truck because I've got a bit more room to show what's involved there. But simply the cable that you've got coming into the caravan goes into the integration kit and then from there we connect the integration kit to the van connect unit that I've got up here. To um, show you in a bit more detail, I've got another integration kit in my hands. There's a port labelled Starlink, so that's the port that goes to the weatherproof plug outside, and then of course to your Starlink dish. 
there's a port labeled Van Connect, and that's the cable that connects to your Van Connect. And then, of course, we've got the independent power going to the, um, the power connection on the top. Unit has an on and off switch, so when you don't need Starlink because um, you're going to bed or you're going away, simply turn it off at the source on the integration kit. You don't even have to put it in stow mode. Um, turn it off here, it's as simple as it is. Now that the installation's finished, we're ready to turn on Starlink. So we've got our weatherproof plug that we've put on. We've got the weatherproof connection. Simply take the cap off, install your plug, turn your Starlink integration kit on after you've connected all your, um, your cables, and we're away.